from LA Late Headquarters in Santa Monica, this is Afternoons LA Late. It's a big afternoon of Afternoons LA Late. As a new era for LA Late starts today, we will expand our coverage of the financial markets more than ever before. The breaking news right now is the Federal Reserve are raising those interest rates exactly as you expected, but the Dow not responding accordingly. In fact, we had discussed this yesterday. We said the Dow is going to likely fall the day after the Federal Reserve announces a 50 basis point increase, and it happened exactly as predicted. 700 points down the Nasdaq, the Dow right now, about 2%. The Nasdaq down about 258 points about three hours into the trading day. Retail sales numbers came in today. They weren't particularly good. Worse than expected this is for the month of November. In the meantime, new continuing, continuing uh, unemployment claims were unchanged. But new claims actually slightly improved. We'll look at the latest breaking details across the board. Then we'll be looking at some t uh, some major moves in the sec in the equities. Tesla taking a ride up after it fell initially, and analysis coming in from Jeffrey Gold Gunsluck at a, de a Double Line Capital, saying it's time for the Federal Reserve to stop with these interest rate spikes. But breaking details across the board as the markets respond to the latest details of these Federal Reserve interest rate spikes. And it's just a tumultuous day at, at, at least. We are a little bit off of the lows of the day, but we could still be trading higher. Big stimulus checks coming to millions of Americans. We'll go over those stimulus checks in today's recording. $300,000 of stimulus checks for you. We'll go over all these incredible stimulus checks, how you get them, and more. We're going to go over stimulus. We're going to go over the economy. We're going to go over your stocks, your bonds, your money, and the recession and inflation, and of course, Talk of the town, the number one guy on everyone's mouth. It's me. No, <laughs> it's lobsters. No, it's not that either. <laughs> it's Jay Val. Jay Val remains the talk of the town, and we'll go over the latest detail of what he said yesterday and what the reaction of the markets was today. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, it's the new afternoon to LA, and it all starts right here, right now, on a beautiful afternoon on the east of Christmas. Stay tuned. Let's go to it right now. Good afternoon, everybody. What a day it is, and we have a lot of major details we're working on today. We'll go over the latest details across the board in today's major recording. We're going to go over all the elements at issue with Jay Powell and that Federal Reserve and what they did yesterday. Plus, we'll be looking at the latest details of the markets. And, of course, we'll be going over the changes at issue with all this breaking news. Let's look at the markets right now. The markets right now are not reacting positively to the news. They are down across the board as expected. Moreover, the NASDAQ is actually not doing well either in view of the latest details of this economy and what it saw yesterday. Let's go into the breaking news starting right now. Let's jump into Tesla and Snap. Here's Tesla and Snap. Tesla is, is slightly up at the moment, but it took a major hit earlier. It was down 1.2% in pre-market trading after Elon Musk announced he had sold another 3.6 billion shares Overnight, those sales came in between Monday and Tuesday, the SEC report says, obtained by LA News. The stock was initially down 1.2, but right now at the time of trading, which is uh, shortly after sunrise here on the West Coast, it's midday in the trading day, the stock is now up about 1% 1 to 158. This is a stock that is down 60 to 70% this year, folks. And Snap... As if Snap can knock it any worse, the social media company is down another 8% today on breaking news. But there is a lot of breaking news, of course. We start with those jobless claims numbers. Let's go right into the unemployment numbers that came in minutes ago. New jobless claims, good. 
it fell, wow, to 211,000 new unemployment claims. That's an improvement because we were 230 last week. Remember, we're worried about any type of unemployment claims that surge to about a 260. So let's remember this duration. We had been at 140 over the summer, then to 180, then to 200, then 230, then all the way to 261. Last week, we had fell, we had gone to 231. And I said, you know what? I'm fine with 231 so long as we stay there. And that was much the same of the number for the last two, three weeks, 230, 240, 230. But then today, fell down to 211,000. So less new jobless claims. That's reassuring in today's market. But more reassuring is this. The continuing jobless claims number, of course, it's Thursday morning. Of course, it's just before sunrise. You see the time of time this show is actually taped. It's on screen right there, 8.33 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Well, the continuing jobless claims number was good because it didn't get worse. It was 1.6 million, uh, and it had been that last week. Remember, Jay Powell, the way the Federal Reserve is dealing with inflation is making more people unemployed. Now, you could say this is good news. You could say this is bad news. You could say it's good news because less people are unemployed. <laughs> You can say it's bad news because Jay Powell's going to look at that down and say, oh, let's fire some more people. <laughs> no, not literally like that, but that's basically how he talks. He basically says the way to get inflation down is to increase the unemployment in the United States. And he talked extensively yesterday when he raised the the latest uh, interest rate spike at 50 basis point, not 75, when he announced it, he said, you know what, the labor inflation is a big problem. The wage inflation is a big problem. He once increased the labor, and so if you see this labor really not any different than last week, in fact, maybe potentially better, you would argue, j Powell's is going to be sort of, you know, okay. <laughs> Let's churn the let's churn uh, the grinders of the Federal Reserve, and let's decrease that inflation by getting some people potentially laid off. Let's go into the stock market. Let's go over the latest details happening right now. Yeah, there's a lot of brand new details come to this channel. Let's look at the numbers right now. So the Dow is starkly down nearly 700 points at the time of this broadcast. This was taped early in the day about 8.33 a.m. You see it right on the graphic. Well, the stock market is really doing exactly what you and I said it was going to do yesterday. Every time that James Pyle speaks the first day, the market goes up. The next day, it always goes down. And it always goes down 607 points. So if you're trading the markets, you know what to do. <laughs> you know what to do. You know the trade on the downside is always the day after J. Powell speaks. Uh, and you don't buy on the news. You, tra you, don't, you, don't, um, you don't move on the rumor. You, you move on the, on the news, which is very atypical. You usually move on the rumor and not move on the news. Let's look at that NASDAQ right now as well. The NASDAQ is down about 2.3% as well. Wow. And that's certainly not helped by any of these details. The second making breaking news story we're working on today is, of course, those retail sales numbers. Wow. Down 0.6% in the month of November, which, of course, was the Black Friday month. And Wall Street was looking for a negative 3%. So it was worse than the estimate and you could argue it's substantially worse than that estimate. Now, is that a surprise to you and I? It's really not. It's really not a surprise to you and I because we understood that the situation with this economy was really not delivering good numbers in the month of November. We had the data two days ago on this channel when we saw that the numbers coming in for November were weaker than October. And then some of the businesses, like Lulamon, saying the month of December is going to be even harder to make money than the month of November. Now, traditionally, December is harder than November. November is fueled by Black Friday. So if November was worse than October, Halloween, imagine how bad December is going to be. And all this lines up to a big problem. The big problem is that many of the retailers are dependent the entire year on those numbers being delivered positively, good, strong, and robust in November, December, and October.
and they're not getting it. So this is a big problem, everything from an Apple, which um, you know uh, is seen in the latest inflationary report two days ago, that smartphone inflation, smartphone prices come down because of inflation. It's big problems. Ultimately, what happens with the retail sector is that if they don't deliver those November, October, and December retail sales numbers, and guess what happens? They post a horrible fourth quarter corporate earnings. And those fourth quarter corporate earnings will be featured on this channel early in January when they start coming on in. But we're already getting guidance. And those guidance of the companies will say, hey, you know, the rest of this year, it's not going to look good. And don't expect January to be better. And ultimately, what happens from that? Potential layoffs, potential closures, and potential bankruptcies. So let's jump into some of the stocks making news right now. So Tesla, of course, was down 1.2% in pre-market trading after that Elon Musk SEC filing that was released. Of course, he sold $3.6 billion of shares. The stock was down, is down 55% year-to-date through Wednesday, but was actually down even more initially. Then we had a Warner Brothers Discovery scrapping uh, uh, its planned content by one billion. Um, the stock is down one point two in pre market trading. Western Digital was downgraded today as well. So there was a lot of reaction to a lot of this major news coming in because these these, these numbers were not particularly good. Of course, you have Tesla uh, getting a pop slightly and Snap getting a major hit. But Western Digital was not doing will, well. It was downgraded from neutral at Goldman, which, which um, pointed to continued problems. The stock was down 4.7% pre-market trading. Yeah, big problems. And Lennar is down 2.6% as new home uh, orders have been sliding at that home builder. AT&T was downgraded as well from equal weight to overweight to equal weight from overweight at Morgan Stanley. And they now believe that there could be problems with the company going into 2023. The stock is down at 1.4 in pre-market trading. And of course, Snap, the reason why Snap was down in that graphic before, is because it has been downgraded to hold by Jeffries. Now, in addition to that jobless claims number released today, we also had some other economic data that came in minutes ago. And that other economic data that came in minutes ago was fascinating. It is from the Philadelphia Manufacturing Index, and it rose 0.6 points, but remained negative at a 13.8 signaling contraction of this economy. This is how much manufacturing. If it's a positive number, it means we're growing. If it's a negative number, it means we're contracting. And it's the fourth consecutive negative, negative reading of the, of the index featured on this channel, uh, and the sixth and seventh month, as I have recorded here across the board. These retail sales numbers, um, why were they down? They were not down because of inflation, because when you t seasonally adjust them for inflation, they're still down. <laughs> they're not down because of used car sales falling. They're, when you take used car sales out and gasoline out, it's still down 0.2%. So it's just, it's just, it's not good, however, you modify it across the board. Where were the big drops in these retail sales numbers released today? Where was the weakness in this economy? Which, which sectors of this economy are not doing particularly well when you look at these retail sales numbers today? The, the areas that are really getting hurt badly are home furnishings down 2.6%, building materials and garden centers down 25 and motor vehicle and parts dealers down 2.3%. Now, don't read too much into that. Because we have featured a lot of those part retailers who have had their third quarter corporate earnings in recent days, and some have beat, and some have missed. Confusing, needless to say. Let's go more into the details across the board. Um, Capital Economics reported the following today. That's Andrew Hunt uh, there. His reaction to the news was the following in a new report he released minutes ago. With weak global and strong dollar compounding the domestic drag from higher interest rates, we suspect this weakness is a sign of things to come. Translation, they say that j Powell is the culprit of the problem, and the culprit is still there at large. Uh, yeah, he's still working. <laughs> he's still at the Federal Reserve. And until j Powell uh, sort of, you know, um, uh, goes into syndication, 
<laughs> until, you know, Jay Paris, Jay Powell just goes on vacation indefinitely. The problem's still there. The Empire Manufacturing Survey Index released today shows activity in the New York region and it posted a negative 11.2 against an estimate of 0.5. Folks, did you hear that right? Manufacturing in New York was suspected to post a negative 0.5. It posted a negative 11.2. Wow. <laughs> That's just insane. Philadelphia Fed survey today also rose 6%, but it was a negative 13.8 compared to a negative 12 estimate. This is all caused by global recession looming, says Hunter, with exports now suffering from the strong dollar and a global recession looming. We're expecting that further weakness in manufacturing lies in stores. Wow. What a day it is. Boy. Big stimulus is available to millions of Americans. And let's look at those big stimulus checks because viewers have been getting them since the month of March. You deserve these big stimulus checks. And they're absolutely incredible. They were passed by, first the president, then Congress, establishing $300,000 of stimulus checks. And what you got to do is understand that this is the way they're done this year. Don't ask about a prior year. You don't talk about when are bell bottom jeans coming back in style. <laughs> you don't. You talk about how do I get the money now the way it's done. And let's look at that big sums of money right now. $300,000 of stimulus checks, 300 different stimulus checks, five stimulus checks on average per month, $3,000 of stimulus checks per month. And it's among the most important focuses of us across the board. 18 months of stimulus checks, $3,000 a month, five checks per month. You need to pounce and get these incredible checks. Let's go right into understanding where these checks came from by jumping right on the video. Number one, the first three checks were passed by Joseph Biden in the month of March, and they're absolutely incredible. Single individuals, $75,000 less qualify. Married couple, $150,000 less qualify. And if you're on benefits or anything else, you qualify. Only the income is the qualifier. $75,000 or less, single individual, you qualify, that's it. That's all you have to know. Married couple, all you have to know is $150,000 or less. The first three checks established by Joe Biden are checks A, B, and C. Check A, B, and C are huge, nearly $100,000 of stimulus checks. We'll go over them in just a second. Then came Congress and they established more stimulus checks, bringing us to stimulus checks E through K. Hundreds of checks, I'm going to go over those checks E through K in a second. Then L&M, N&O, P&Q, all in the Allied Newsletter. Where do I apply for these checks? In the Allied Newsletter. Where do I get these stimulus checks? In the Allied Newsletter. Where do I get these stimulus checks? In the Allied Newsletter. Delivered for me to you, 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Go down in that alert. You receive exactly at 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern. Pass the guy at the surfboard to where it says View Post. Click the link and go right in and apply. There's that button, View Post. Click it in, go right and apply and get these incredible checks. And without a delay, let's go right into those first three checks right now. Check A is a $6,500 to $12,000 stimulus check. It's absolutely incredible. And you deserve that check, and let's look at it right now. $6,500 to $12,000 for a stimulus check. Passed by Joseph Biden in the month of March. Go get it. Go right on this video. Click the link. Join this channel. Become a member. Become a Purple Hawk. Purple Power, Cal Casino VIP, go down the membership newsletter, apply for check A. Then go down in the newsletter, apply for check B. Fifteen to $80,000. Viewers for check B are cleaning up. This is the one that's getting them lots of checks, 18 months of stimulus checks. And let's look at that incredible success story from Frank Mancuso. He's one of many viewers. 18 months of check B, all his utilities, all his high-speed internet. Folks, that's five to six checks per month. That is tens of thousands of dollars. He paid less than $5 to become a member, and he walked away with tens of thousands of dollars. Where else can you walk into the store and give someone 4 or $5 and walk out with tens of thousands of dollars? Why would you not get these incredible stimulus checks? And that is check B. Check B, on average, viewers are getting big money from that. They're getting 18 months, five checks per month. They're getting a lot of money, upwards of $100,000. We're going to go over more about these sums of monies in just a second, but now let's turn to the next check you apply for in the membership newsletter. The next check in the membership newsletter you apply for is check C, and check C is for rent, utilities, mortgage, assistance, and more, and that incredible check C is just wonderful. It is really, really wonderful, and here it is right here. You go down that membership newsletter to see check C. 
click the link and it tells you who to call, what to say, and how to say it. There's 12 places to reach out to for that incredible check C. Reach out to all 12. Don't reach out to one. Reach out to all 12 because you're going to get a yes. You're also going to get a no. Check C is everywhere. It's for rent, utilities, mortgage assistance, and more. This is federal stimulus from the federal government. Do you want $30,000 of rent? Go get check C. How about $15,000 for utilities? How about a quarter million dollars to SNAP? What about $166,000? Yep, it's happening all the time. Mark got $32,000 of stimulus checks on this channel. Then he went to $50,000 of stimulus checks. Then he went to $100,000 of stimulus checks. Then he went to $166,000 of stimulus checks. Lorraine was at $105,000. She went to $155,000. These big stimulus checks are for the federal government. So it has nothing to do with where you live or where you, what state you're in. And after those first three checks bundled by Joseph Biden, then came Congress and they established more checks. And those additional checks from Congress brought us to checks E through K. Where do I apply for E through K? In the membership newsletter. Have you become a member? Join right now and welcome to the nearly 100 new members joining this channel every 24 to 48 hours. So you're watching Alight, the number three most watched financial news network in America with three broadcasting channels, live tape, short, long, and four form all across the board. Alight 1, Alight 2, and Alight 3. Let's go into those continuing stimulus checks. Check E is a $7,500 stimulus check. How do I get it? Become a member, go on this video, and join the channel, and go down in the newsletter to check E. F, $4,000 stimulus check. G, 30% off. H, $2,000 stimulus check. Love it. Stimulus I, an $8,000 stimulus check. J, an $8,000 stimulus check. K, a $14,000 stimulus check. Then we go to those other stimulus checks I found for you as well. $100,000 of stimulus checks. At L, M, $4,000 of stimulus checks. Love it. Then we go to stimulus N, <laughs> like Nancy. N is a brand new tablet, a brand new computer, a brand new laptop. Love it. It's really wonderful. Do you want a brand new computer, tablet, or laptop for the holidays? Get stimulus N. It's in the members from newsletter. Become a member. Go right down to stimulus N and apply. Stimulus O, zero down payment, zero closing costs for a brand new mortgage, and no insurance required. And the stimulus P and Q. P is 3% for a refi, and Q is a beautiful 8,000. Now, in addition to opening that membership newsletter, go down to the third line or fourth line to that membership newsletter to find the Allied Worksheets. They're in the newsletter. It's part of the benefits of becoming a member to, these, to this family. And in those worksheets, you want to pull them out. What do we know today about inflation? So today we know that inflation is really hovering still above a 7%. Jay Powell reassured yesterday that he needed inflation to 2%. He started with this path of raising interest rates a year ago this month when inflation was 8%. It's now at 7.1%. He needs to get it to 2%. So we all know that this is going to be a long road. How long a road is it? They previously said the Federal Reserve to 2024. Yesterday he seemed to signal he could get this done by mid-2023. Do I agree? Do you agree? Jump in the live chat. Do you think Jay Powell is going to get inflation to 2% in 2023? Answer, yes, 2% two per, two, uh, two inflation, no, 2% inflation, 2023. My answer is no. I don't think he's going to get it done. I don't, I don't, I don't, and I'll tell you why in right now. The problem with the inflation in the CPI report released earlier this week was the components that are causing this inflation to go up are not really impacted by j Powell raising rates. Let's jump into that data that came in earlier this week when that CPI, the Consumer Price Index, was released on Monday. It showed that year-to-date CPI was 7.1% up. So what went up? Eggs, 49.1%. Airfare, 36%. Butter, 34%. This is year-to-date in the latest CPI released this week. After a year of interest rate spikes, show impact on these items? Lettuce up 20%. 20% lettuce. Pet food up 15%. Utilities 15.5. Milk 14.7. 14 so you see a lot of food in that list. You see a lot of food and you also see airfare. You see public transportation at 24%. Health insurance, uh, poultry, electricity. It's, it's basically a lot of food. Let's go over to uh, car rentals, down 6%. Televisions, down 17%. Smartphones, down 23%. So that's all consumer goods. You know, a tangible item you buy, like a pen or a computer. Uh, appliances, down 1%.
used cars down 3%, computers down 4.4%. So clearly what's happening here, is, and by the way, um, the rent was up 7% on the latest CPI. What's clearly going on here is that what Jay Powell is doing at the Federal Reserve may be working with consumer goods, which are items that you buy, like a desk or a sofa or a computer or a car. Maybe working with that, but it's not working with food. It's absolutely not working with food. It's not working with airlines, and it's not working with uh, it's 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 also not working with um, utilities. And until someone realizes that's the problem, we could be doing this for a long time. It's particularly not clear what's going on with this administration in the White House because the airlines are regulated by the federal government. The Also, the food manufacturers and the grocery stores, to some extent, are regulated by the federal government. They can't price gouge. And so you certainly see there's something going on here. Initially, the prices went up because of supply chain disruption, the inability to get the products from the manufacturer to you cheaply or at the same price as pre previous years. That was driven because of fuel prices going up. The gasoline went up. The truck driver prices went up. The shipping went up. It's all back down to original levels of 2020. So if they're all back down to the original levels of 2020, then why are the price of food still up and still going up every month? Why are they still going up if their costs to get the product to their store are back down to normal? Mm -hmm. There needs to be some sort of effort politically from the people in Congress to ensure that we as Americans are not being price gouged by the supermarkets, or at least who's selling the products to the supermarkets are not price gouging them either. Because clearly there's no reason for the food like, like head of lettuce to be up 20% still year to date. It doesn't cost 20% more to get that head of lettuce from the grower to you than it did last year. It's price gouging and it's core. Now, the airlines. The airline fares are slightly coming down because JetBlue reported that the demand is off. The demand was really high in the summer. The demand is cooling very quickly. The question is how quickly is it cooling? If it cools enough that it brings down the airline inflation, which is now in that latest CPI 34% up, then that helps. But if it doesn't, then again, Congress should be bringing in those airline executives. Congress has brought in airline executives of power. Airline executives went to Congress in spring of 2020 and met with Mark Meadows and pleaded for lots of stimulus when they needed a bailout. Well, guess what? They're riding high and mighty with massive corporate earnings, beating, 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 and now their price levels are so out of control, it's time to ask, why are your prices so high, sir and madam? Why are they so high? They really need to be brought in and question as to why the airline fares are so high. It brings you back to the common question. You have a plane and you have only, let's say, 100 to 200 seats in that plane. And if you only have one seat available, then you raise the price? Or why not just sell out the plane? Why not just sell out the plane in the old price levels? If the old price level is $200 for the flight, for the seat, just sell out the plane at $200. Why, if there's so much demand for those seats, do you have to bring the price from 200 to 400 And again, I don't think what Jay Powell's doing is going to get that down at all. It's important to understand the distinction. And ultimately, if you understand the distinction, you'll realize that Jay Powell with raising rates is not going to solve the airline fares. If the airlines want to continue to raise those fares, won't solve the grocery stores. If the grocery stores still want to sell that had a lettuce higher, and also won't solve the rent. Rent is 30% of inflation. In that latest CPI, it was a big, big up number. 7% up was the rent, and so was the CPI. So if you can't get the landlords to reduce the rent by raising interest rates, then why raise interest rates? Which brings us to some of the commentary today after the reaction of the news came in yesterday from Jay, of Jay Powell's spike. Let's look at some of the reaction to today's news. And it is Double Line Capital's CEO, Jeffrey Gunlock. I think they should not do, they should not do any more hikes after today. This is a comment wrote by him late yesterday. I think there's been some progress in inflation. 
nobody's really talking about these runway price increases anymore. With the, econ with the economy weakening, I think it's time the inflation rate is going to fall faster than most economists do. Now, ultimately, understand the, the verb tense in that sentence. With the economy weakening, I think the inflation rate is going to fall faster than most economists do. The problem is it hasn't. The problem is it has not. He thinks it's going to fall faster, but it hasn't. And so, ultimately, here's the big question mark. What j Powell and the Federal Reserve's policy has been since, since last December is move quickly and get that inflation down quickly. And then if we get it down quickly, we can stop. As opposed to what Gunlock is saying is that stop hiking right now because eventually the rates, eventually the inflation is going to go away. Which of the two do I err on? I err on the Federal Reserve. I agree with the Federal Reserve. I think you go very aggressively and get inflation down. Down. Get it down immediately. And once it's down, just stop. <laughs> just stop interest rates spiking. Don't, I don't subscribe to what Gunlock is talking about, which is stop the rates because you believe inflation is going to eventually fall. And because we've seen this problem in prior Federal Reserve actions and prior, in prior governors where they thought they could stop the foot on the pedal because things were going the right direction and they didn't happen. Which brings me back to what I just said in my analysis a second ago. If you believe the cause of inflation right now is the landlords continue to raise the rates because they can. If you believe the inflation is still the airlines charging more for those airline flights because they can. And if you believe that the problems of the inflation right now is the growers, the farmers asking for more of a head of the lettuce because they can, then if you take the foot off the pedal and you stop interest rates spiking, what do you think is going to happen? The airlines are still going to do what they're going to do. The landlords are still going to spike the rents. And the farmers are still going to spike the price on the head of the lettuce. And you won't have solved inflation. So I think there's a double problem here. I think the problem is that people think that if you stop interest rate spikes, inflation sells down. No. And then I think that other people think that if you continue to interest rate spike, inflation is going to go away. No, it'll solve some of the parts of inflation, like the appliances and the the um, the computers and the smartphones, but it's not solving these these ills of inflation, which are the airlines, the food, and the rent. If you can't get those fixed, folks, that's that's 30, 40, 50 percent of the inflationary report. If you can't get those three parts fit, there's a big problem. And what's the solution? Congress. Congress, they need to bring these people in and say, what are you doing? You are causing the inflation of this economy. And I don't understand why Congress is not doing this. It, it, it's not a political event. It, it, is, it is part of ensuring that the livelihood of our citizens are right. Let's go back into the more of the breaking details that we're working with right now today as we go into them uh, across the board. But first, here's a little bit about the commercial community page. <laughs> I almost forgot about those beautiful people. Uh, here is first a little bit about the community page. I'll be back with you in 60 seconds as we continue more on this new look and this new era for LLA. I'm so excited we're here together as a family today and we'll go over more about what was the inspiration for this new look and new era. It was all you. We'll be talking about that more in the big second half as Afternoon's LA Holiday Edition continues. If you want money right now, not five days from now, and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. Home LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily.
and then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. And the excitement continues in a big second half, and half, second half on the shores of Santa Monica, California. Hope you're having a beautiful day. It is a great day here on LA. And I'm so excited we're with you today. And let's take a look back at the markets right now. Those quotes were about 30 minutes ago. Let me tell you where the markets are trading right now at the time of today's broadcast. So you certainly see the clock on the screen right there. Where are we with the market right now shortly after 9 o'clock this morning? So the market is really having a problem. It has fallen as much as 800 points today on the latest news across the board. Let me show you where the markets are right now. Uh, as we start this big second half, the market is heading to almost 800 points down. Uh, the Nasdaq is down nearly 300 points. For the Nasdaq, that's 3% down. For the Nat for the Dow, that's 2.2% down. There's a lot of big issues, and some of this is being driven by the Federal Reserve's comments yesterday, as, as we knew it was going to be. But the big part, apparently, that's being dry that is drying up the markets today is those retail sales numbers. People were a little bit surprised by those retail sales numbers, but I'm not particularly clear why. We had that data in a uh, Goldman Sachs report earlier this week. Goldman Sachs said, get ready for horrible December numbers. They said the November retail sales numbers were weaker than October, and December is going to be weaker than that. So I'm not quite clear why America, why the markets are surprised by this news today. Here's some of the reaction to the news minutes ago. Mike Wilson from Morgan Stanley said minutes ago that people assume the earnings are going to come down, but it's the magnitude of that decline and how fast it's going to happen that we think that's going to be where the surprise is. Fascinating. So he is focusing a little bit more on the magnitude of the decline and the speed of the decline. Um, again, that's going back, you know, again, the elephant in the room with that type of quote is... Take the foot off the take the foot off the pedal, Jay Powell. Take the foot off the pedal because ultimately this could be bringing us further and faster down across the board. When uh, when we looked at uh, when we looked at Snap and we were wondering about those moves initially, and we we're looking at this early in the in the day with the market, well, the market has fallen all the way to eight eight hundred points down, and it's trying to come back to about seven hundred points down at the moment. So it's clearly not a very stable situation, any way, shape, or form. Let's go back into the numbers we're looking at right now on this big second half from the shores of Santa Monica, California. In addition to those comments by Mike Wilson, who believes that the magnitude of the fall down will be very significant, he believes the negative operating leverage that we've seen from the falling inflation is what's going to hurt the margins. And that's irrespective of whether there's an economic recession. I think that's fascinating. So Snap, of course, is being impacted by that downgraded Jeffries, and this is what Jeffries wrote minutes ago. We believe that Snap will continue to face several headwinds, including the IS privacy changes, a worsening macroeconomic picture, and intense competition. The stock is down 8% in during, as of today alone. The stock has fallen dramatically throughout the entire year. This is breaking news in the last 40 minutes. In the last 40 minutes, Netflix has fallen dramatically. Netflix, in the last 40 minutes since this broadcast started, has fallen 7%, but following a digitized, digit day report that says, and get ready for this one, that Netflix has agreed to return money to advertisers because Netflix failed to meet guidance on how many viewers it had promised or represented to the advertisers. Advertisers buy space based upon what they believe they can get for viewership. Now, sometimes the advertising rate is based upon the number of viewership. Sometimes it's based upon a prediction. In this case, it appears to have been based upon a prediction. Netflix represented how many viewers it was going to give those advertisers. It missed. It missed on those viewership targets. And so Netflix has now agreed to return money back to those advertisers. The stock is down 51% year to date. It's down 7% today, just on that news less than 40 minutes ago. Verizon, on the other hand, is having a great day. The stock is up 1% as it's been upgraded by Morgan Stanley minutes ago. And only 27 stocks currently are in the positive realm today in a very, very volatile market across the board. 
Tesla is one of the few positives in the NASDAQ 100. Now, hold up, <laughs> NASDAQ. Tesla was negative initially on that Elon Musk selling of billions of dollars of shares. Remember, Tesla was 1.2% down in pre-market trading when we learned 3.6 billion shares have been sold by Elon Musk between the last 48 hours. Stock is already down 55% year to date. But now it's getting a 1% up. 1% <laughs> up, nothing to celebrate anytime soon. Now, let's look at the rest of the tech sector right now. Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon are down 2% each right today. Alphabet and Meta were down about 3% earlier today. Netflix, we just heard 7%. NVIDIA is down more to 4%. This is causing the mega cap tech sector to really decelerate quickly across the board. Stocks opened today down and then fell more throughout the day. Let me give you a duration of how we've gone. So you see the timestamp on the screen of when the show is actually being taped. See that right there, 907? That's actually when the tape show is being taped. You may be watching it later in the day. The market has already been open for a few hours. When the market opened, we were up 316. We were down 316 points. Then when I went on air, I told you that we were down... Um, and you see it actually on the screen. You see around the screen, we were down 655 points when I went on air. Now we're down about nearly uh, 700, 800 points. Let me go over some other breaking news that are happening minutes ago. Um, the biggest uh, 17 stocks in the S&P 500 are in positive territory, and the rest of the S&P 500 are in negative territory right now. And of course, they're all being dragged, dra dragged down by Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet, the parent company of Google. And of course, being hurt by that Netflix story minutes ago. Let's go over to Trevor's treasury yields. Let's go off those treasury yields. The treasury yields are having a fascinating move in the last two days. And I got to explain something to you in view of this Fed funds rate, because a lot of people have been talking about this. The treasury yields have declined after the Fed announced policy. And the Treasury yields on the 10-year bench note are now below 3.5%. Is that confusing? It is confusing. Let me tell you what's going on here. You would presume that if the, the bond traders believe that Jay Powell is going to raise rates, which he said yesterday, that the bond yields will go higher. If Jay Powell raises rates, bond yields go higher. Bonds trade higher, right? Not apparently so. There is a very big event happening this week that everyone and their sister and brother is talking about, and that is that Wall Street is not listening. They're actually using an expression, Wall Street's not listening. Now, we have said that expression all this year on this channel, but for the first time, everyone's now saying it, and especially in regards to the yields. J. Powell said yesterday, by raising those Fed fund rates, we may have to go to 5.1% by the middle of next year. 5.1%. So doesn't remember that number. Well, where are the Treasury yields right now? Three. <laughs> and they're going lower. Uh, wait. J. Powell gave us guidance we're going up to 5.1. And the yields are on the, the, <laughs> the Treasury yields are going down to a three. Yeah. To make this even more bizarro, when you line up the Federal Reserve's Fed funds rates right now versus the actual Treasury yields, they're not apples to apples. The Treasury yields are much lower, meaning that the bond traders are ignoring Jay Powell. They know what he said. They heard what he said. They're ignoring what he said, which brings us to the big question. Why? Why is this happening? No one really has an answer for it. There's certain theories for it. The first theory is the bond traders don't believe Jay Powell. They hear him saying he's going to go to 5.1. They, they're thinking, no, he's not. He's going to uh, call chicken, and then ultimately he's going to back off and we'll never get to 5.1. We'll go lower. Number two, they believe that uh, for purposes of the banking industry, no banker is going to start to write things at 5.1 because they'll have no business. Or number three, they just do their own thing. <laughs> <laughs> what is my uh, guesstimate on this? I really don't. I don't have a guesstimate at all on this. I don't. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. If J. Powell says is what we're going to do, if J. Powell gives you a current guidance of where you are, and if you even look at where the Fed funds rate is right now, I mean, where is it right now? You line it up to the bond rate, they don't match up. Meaning, the bond traders say, "Nope, we're not going to trade this up anymore." <laughs> now remember. 
Bonds go up, stocks go down. Bonds go down, stocks go up. Stocks are down and bonds are down today. <laughs> so does that make any more confusion? It does. And you know what today is? Because I almost forgot. <laughs> today is the 15th of December. The 14th of the December, as recorded on the channel for the last two weeks, is the first day of the Santa Claus Rally for 2022. The Santa Claus Rally is an event that happens every year where stocks go up in the month of December on the 10th trading day of the month of December. The 10th trading day of the month of December was yesterday, December 14th. The markets are down today. And that is not a good signal, potentially a warning sign. And potentially a red flag and a siren being sound that a Santa Claus rally for the month of December may not happen. As recorded on this channel all this last week, if the CPI is not what Wall Street wants, if the Federal Reserve is says something Wall Street doesn't want, we may not have a federal, we may not have a Santa Claus rally, which is usually always happening, even a recession and even a bear market, which is where we are likely across the board. Finally, why for the new version of LA debuted today? While there's still some tinkering, and there's still going to be some soft uh, refreshing coming to the new look, it was all because of you. In a recent LA late night show in which Mo Dog was in there and Anne and Crayola and Diane and Shirley and Dragon, uh, and hopefully I just named, mentioned everyone, I'll do it again. <laughs> uh, I asked the viewers, what do you think? I would like to expand the financial news coverage on this channel. I'd like to give you more information. I'd like to help you learn more. And I'd like you to earn more. And they said, absolutely. I said, how do we do this? They said, expand more topics and, sh and, uh, and, and get more into a very dense running time. And there you go. That is, and this is the first attempt at doing that. I think we pulled it off pretty well. So thank you again to Lynn Glenn for her incredible comments where she says, we're all here to learn. We are all here to learn. And the more information you teach me, LA, the more I am watching you. I love that. And thank you again to Lynn Glenn and Dragon and Crayola and Anne and Shirley Parker and Diane and Mo Dog and everyone who was in that live show. It was about two nights ago. You remember, we went over this and they even went over how to do it and how to structure it. Love you to death. Join me next on Evenings L8 and also get ready for the new look of this channel coming to Mornings L8 as well. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, stay informed, stay focused, have a beautiful day. And as always, stay in focus and stay with L8 as more. And stay with me as Holidays L8 returns to Afternoons tomorrow edition. <laughs>